So we're here on the island of Hoy, in the Orkney Isles, in the far north of Scotland. And we're here to climb the legendary Longhope route on St John's Head, the highest vertical sea cliff on the British Isles. Now, the Longhope route was first climbed by Ed Drummond and Oliver Hill in 1970. It was a ground up ascent, it took them seven days to climb from sea to summit, sleeping in hammocks on ledges, dodging falling rocks, and all the time dealing with that intense unknown wall above them, with no option to turn back. It was without a doubt one of the most audacious rock climbing ascents of the generation, and it took 41 years, but it was renowned Scottish climber Dave McLeod who finally free climbed the original line, only using the strength of his body to climb higher, and only relying on ropes and gear to protect the fall. I love adventure, I love challenge, and the long hope is both of those things instilled into, into one climb. It's a flipping massive big wall on a huge sea cliff with chossy rock, foamers spitting at you left, right and centre, and a lot of hard climbing. And the idea of overcoming those challenges, those obstacles, and trying to free this thing, to me, is just like the perfect adventure. That's why I'm here. So last year I came with a friend, Emma Twyford. I don't think we really appreciated the complexities of climbing the Long Hope. It's a lot more than just hard climbing up there. Yeah, honestly, I am pretty nervous about being back here. Obviously, put a lot of effort in last year to doing it. And, uh, you know, coming back a year on, you, you kind of you forget how tiring it was and how much it took out of you. Being back here the first day, it all rushed back. This is gonna be another flipping hard trip. It's not a holiday. And yeah, of course, like, it gets me nervous because I'm like, what happens if I don't do it? Do you want to start by introducing yourself? Mm-hmm. I'd love to. <laughs> Please do. What do you do? Do you say, hi, I'm Alex? I'm Alex. I live in Carlisle, near the Lake District. I'm mainly a boulder, mainly through lack of organisational skills. I would go track climbing. I love track climbing, but, you know, it's hard to get partners and stuff. And this is my holiday. <laughs> I've been spending more time in Scotland, Robbie lives in Scotland, and I think we just arranged to go climbing because, because of that, yeah, both being geographically close. Uh, Robbie asked me to come on this trip ages ago, and at, at the time I actually didn't have a job, um, so I was like, oh yeah, I can go on a trip for ages, you know, I've got all the time in the world. And uh, in the intervening period, I picked up quite a stressful job, <laughs> and um, now I'm using up all my holiday. But I'm thrilled to be here, obviously. Um, so before coming out, I did, I did try and prepare. For work, I have like this like, portable fingerboard. But there was, there's no way of like, hanging it up, really. So I've, um, I've just been like, hooking it over the end of my feet. It's all been quite haphazard, actually, the training. I mean, when I think about like, talking to Robbie there, like, he was saying like, he's, got, you know, he's been talking to like, a coach and a nutritionist and stuff. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like halfway through a brioche now. <laughs> Sardines, 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 
Robbie and I had a short conversation. We're pretty warm, which is unusual really, but our uh, fingers are freezing, um, <laughs> to be expected, I suppose. Northumberland might be a brilliant ball, probably. Same for the <laughs> like we always say in Bouldering, it's a shame about the landing. <laughs> I will admit, I was not quite sure how Alex would be on a trip like this. My understanding of Alex's climbing is pretty much solely as a boulderer. He's a really flipping strong boulderer. He's a lot stronger than me, that's for sure. But I wasn't sure how he would be on, you know, like a, a big, big wall like the Long Hope. I don't really care too much about how hard someone climbs if I want to go climb with them. All I care about is if I'm going to get along with them and I think that they can adapt to the scenario and I kind of saw in Alex that he was that sort of person who would just adapt to pretty much anything you threw at him and I saw that he really wanted an adventure and that's why I asked him to come out here because I knew he would just you know, take the ball and run with it and I knew that we'd just get along really well. And that's exactly what's happened. The rock on the, um, the crux pitch is actually really good. It's like solid, it's, it's good sandstone. You'd be pleased to find it in Northumberland, you know. The rest of it, however, is biscuit, like Weetabix. Weetabix standard of rock, like it, you know, like it was made by Kellogg's, McVitie's. McVitie's Weetabix, I think that's right. I should know, I think they're made in Carlisle, you know. They're definitely McVitie's. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, on day one, right, so I was like swinging in to try and, like pulling on, in on a bit of rock to, to place a cam to redirect the ab rope. And um, kind of like a, a brick-sized block just like came off in my hand, which I promptly smashed into my face with all the force I could manage and then basically threw it at Robbie's head. <laughs> well, I dropped it, but he was below me. So the effect was, I threw it at Robbie's head. It missed him, obviously. That what that's what this is, and that's what this, this kind of black eye going on here is. Um, and that was really my first look in. That's actually right at the top as well, that, that rock. It's weird, it's like a big like lump of just shite rock just above the belay. Well, what we're using is belay. Um, and then below the crux pitch, yeah, it's just awful. Yeah, I'm just not sure which bit to go up on. Because it's all fucking choss. That is literally a pile of shit. Like, literally. There's one above you as well that looks really shady. Yeah, dude, I'm definitely going to want gear out right. The rock's so dodgy. There's a pool bar there. Other people are fucking flicking through the telly right now, seeing what's on. And I'm doing this. This was sold to me as a bouldery excursion, this, this pitch. How's it bald? Thing like a plate just like popped off. Actually, do you know what? I just put it back where I was. I hope Robbie doesn't pick it up. It's our second, isn't he? He's got nothing to worry about. Of swinging. <laughs> There's such a massive pendulum swing into the sea. I don't do this naturally. Right? I'm basically constantly scared. I'm constantly forcing myself to do this for no other reason than probably my own ego. Self esteem is so low, he feels he has to come out to these places and do these things. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's such a stupid place to be. As we said earlier, she fucking be in Bahamas having a nice holiday. I had a friend who said that he was so scared of climbing that um, 
basically all of his climbing career amounted to just farting and burping up up roots. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that do you can you um relate? Excuse me, that's what it's all about. I think I eat my way up roots because mm. when I'm scared I eat and I'm scared constantly, so I'm eating constantly. I don't eat my although it's good. Yeah, that's true. That's a fucking joke. <laughs> I just need some like comfort food. <laughs> oh my god. It's not an inspiring face. <laughs> so last year the birds were a huge problem. We were in the peak of their nesting season uh, and they were of course pretty unhappy about the fact that we were there. And I, I, was, I was unhappy about it as well. I, I didn't really want to be disturbing them when they're nesting. I, I felt morally that it, it wasn't really right. We've come back a month earlier. We're actually just before their, their nesting, their, their egg laying season. So it means that they're not as aggressive. They're still up there. There's still loads of birds, but I haven't actually had any problems with them. The birds like Robbie and they hate me. That is for certain. Um, for example, there's one full mile that lives on a ledge. Robbie said that ledge is great. The full mile's really nice, you know. She she has no problems. Um, she loves the climates, you know. Yeah. If if she could, if she had opposable thumbs, she'd be making you a cup of tea. So I was like, oh great. Got down there, and she's all spitting at me and hissing and throwing up on my feet and everything. What's that about? She must know. And then there's like Hilda or Meredith or whatever he's calling her. Mildred, I call her. That one that lives on the crux. <laughs> She's great with Robbie. He's like hanging out. He did like a video call with his girlfriend there and that bird. He just sits politely along this, with this bird and it hates me, it hates me, yeah. They're really egging him on. It's quite nice actually because I looked into Fulmars and they return to the same nesting spots every year with the same partners. And I recognize the birds. They're the same birds. They have like their own personalities. Um, every bird is different. And you know, some of them do spit at you and some of them really don't care. Like Mildred just seems to be totally cool. It's just really nice to see the same birds uh, the second year round. I actually love the fact that they're up there. I think it adds just something to the climb. This time round, I want to have everything in place before we go for the lead. I don't want there to be any stone left unturned. I want to know everything about the climb, every pitch, so that when we go for it, we're moving fast. At the moment, the process is working down from the top pitch, working every, every pitch on the way down, figuring out every gear placement that we want to place, figuring out how the ropes run, so that we don't create any rope drag and, and also figuring out little tactics that to speed us up. Last year I felt that me and Emma didn't put enough effort into lower pitches. We didn't really know what gear we were placing so we were moving slowly uh, we got lost a bit. This time it's going to be different. This time we're going to have a set rack for every pitch of only the key bits of gear that we're going to need for both the pitch and the next belay, and it's going to be smooth, uh, a smooth process. I'm teaching Alex essentially how to rack gears at the belay so that by the time he builds the belay and I arrive at the belay, we're ready to go for the next pitch. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a, a good team strategy for making it move a lot smoother. We've both done really well on the crux pitch, which to be honest was to be expected. We can't get complacent in thinking that just because we're doing well on the hardest pitch means that we're going to do it because that's not what the long hope's about. It's everything else, the other 90% of this climb, that when you do that from the ground, that knackers you. And it's not just, it's not just like the physical aspect of climbing that, it's the mental aspect. It's the fact that every second you're on that wall, you're scared. 
It's the fact that at any moment a Fulma could spit at you and scare you and cause you to fall off. It's the fact that at any second a hold could break. And that just anxiety spread over the whole length of the day knackers you. It's strange, like uh, the differences between us. You can't rock up to Frankenjur and do like action director or whatever it's called or you know like he's not climbing the hardest sport in the world. What Robbie's fantastic at is climbing very well in extreme discomfort. I think that's his talent, yeah. It's a shame really that Robbie lives in the UK because it's hard for him to find the thing that he's really good at which is these kind of uh, like longer, more arduous routes that require yeah, determination in the face of uncomfort. And uh, I guess that's why he's dragged us all out here. It's like, this is the best place for that in the UK. That wall is, is incredibly uncomfortable and you still have to be pretty good at climbing when you're there. Yeah, and that's what we're always good at. Being able to, I think, manage our fears across the whole length of the day and arrive at the belay of the crux pitch relatively fresh and ready to do battle with 8B climbing on trad. I guess that's going to be the crux of this climb. We're in the last uh, couple of days before we go for the push. And we're still refining beta. Uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, we've got two footholds here. Foothold one and foothold two. Foothold one was what I used last year. Foothold two is what I tried this year. Still not sure whether I will choose foothold one or foothold two. They are on the same, they're two inches away from each other. They're foothold left, foothold two on the left is marginally better, but it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> uh, there is definitely a difference, but it's hard to tell the difference on the lead uh, on the when you're trying to climb it. It's amazing what you can figure out up here, you know, if you spend enough time on it. You can bring the route down to your level, which is my strategy as always. Try and use as little of my precious energy I have to get up this thing. That is ultimately what we're trying to do here. Nice, dude. Nice. Can you try something for me? Maybe. Before you uh, finish. See, let's just see that method of getting to the bread loaf. Does that feel hard for you? It's easier than what you're doing, I know that. Yeah, because you go again, don't you? My way is really easy. It feels so, so like, controlled. Oh, I beat her on, like, every... Uh, well, yeah, that's the fucking point. No, no, but it's just like, <laughs> that feels good to me, and then, like, I feel like I've tried good ways now, it's going to be, like, slightly different. So the, the, what, the way that I quite like is you get that right, there's, like, a right-hand finger lock, which is just so sinker. It's like, it just, it, yeah, it just, it does that. if you, yeah, if your foot popped off, yeah. I would just be still hanging there with yeah, one arm, yeah. you know? And then when you've got that, you put your right, your left foot's on a good foothold, your right foot goes high on like a smear under the roof. I've tick marked yeah, it. I think I've tried this. Yeah, and then you just go left hand there and then left hand like that. Yeah. I'd rather go now. I think I'm preferring my way. Okay. But no, no I'm keen to try. I'm going to play in this section as well. I think I, I think I can do that pitch. Having to, having to do that pitch after everything else is a bigger question mark. And I think, although I'd love to do this route in one day, like from the bottom to the top, it might have to be that I do it from the bottom to the B layer of the crux pitch and come back the next day.
See, that's how it's done. <laughs> now this punter up here, going whee, whee, jumping all over the shop. Sequences are an art form. You find the easiest way up the wall. There have definitely been a few surprises this trip. We had a one day, just a couple of days ago, where we tried to lead the crux pitch. A kind of a practice, practice go at it, you know, see what it's like to actually get on the sharp end, place the gear on lead and, and go for it. I placed all the gear up to the second crux and unfortunately just slipped off this like little crimp. It was just a bit greasy. Um, took a fall. It was absolutely fine. Like I was, I was like so relieved the gear held and and I just felt great. I was like, ah, oh. and suddenly I was relaxed and I felt great that, you know, I was, I, I'd taken a fall. It kind of like settled my nerves quite a bit. Then it was Alex's turn and you really couldn't be bothered like going and cleaning all the, the gear. So he just led it on my gear, kind of clipped up sort of thing. He got up to the same bit as me, grabbed the same crimp and the same thing happened. He just slipped off it. He fell and then suddenly I just heard this ping and as I held his cat, held his fall, another ping happened, and this he just came hurtling down the wall. I just kind of held tightly onto the rope and closed my eyes. The gear ripped, right? You hear people say that a lot. The gear ripped, but what they mean is the gear came out of the placements. That's not this. This is what I mean by the gear ripped. Yeah. I mean it literally just exploded, and this isn't the only one. But below this, we had um, like a half nut. The head just blew right off the nut. It's just like pinged out. Um, and then below that, we had a cam. That, um, some of the webbing tore, the carabiner bent out of shape and the gate doesn't close, and then it ripped. And then the cam below that held me. I fell miles, like 30 meters. <laughs> I ended up like parallel to Robbie. Have we been climbing? you know, from the ground. I'd have taken a ground fall from like 30 meters. Jesus. I wonder if that's, that's going to make me rethink a lot of travel routes. Yeah. 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 What we do is... Pretty dangerous. <laughs> this is fucked. This is fucked. Yeah. I think I'm something like... Some, someone get us to the fucking Bahamas. <laughs> Set up by us on plane ticket. You just relax. Yeah. It's like fish. Oh, it's just nice. read, read a book. Have yeah. a beer. I'll drink it. <laughs> That's what it takes. <laughs> I'll take it back in beer. Drink it. Any beer you want. Right, yeah, so that's basically the sum total. Send us beer and take us to the Bahamas. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to go try the Long Hope. There's going to be some heavy winds coming in, some poor weather, and it has forced my hand on uh, deciding to go for it tomorrow. I can tell that Alex is pretty nervous. No one felt ready for anything, really. I don't think anyone slept. For one, it was bad weather. For two, everyone was quite anxious. Well, I just remember all night, I was just thinking about like the crux pitch and where you might fall off. There was so much we hadn't organized, so much we hadn't prepared for. And uh, it really showed because on the morning, there was so many, for lack of a better word, fuck ups. Oh fuck. What? The tea tastes a fairy liquid. Oh. I'm gutted about that tea. Tea is like the thing that just like, holds my life together. It is that bad one. It is, it's terrible. It tastes of flipping dishwasher fluid. There's nothing much more can go wrong. Oh, shoot and tempt fate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, there's, there's a lot that could go wrong. <laughs> yeah. This is the worst conditions we've had in this trip. Yeah, by far. 
roof. It's the worst I felt at the top of the roof. And we're about to go to the bottom for the first time. I know sometimes, you know, the best days start off like this. You never know. Just could get down there and see what happens. Thanks. It doesn't matter that the sun's coming out. This is miserable whether it's sunny or not. Helmet wet. Harness wet. Yeah. Long home. Take one. I'll be honest, my motivations were really low. I didn't really think that we had a chance. And I was just really there to kind of see what happens. There are so many sections of that first pitch which make me want to be sick. The rock quality is so, so bad. I've never experienced anything like it. This stuff is like a sandcastle. You can make handholds just by dragging your finger along the face. There's an enormous flake that I had to grab a hold of. This thing that just vibrates as soon as you grab it. And you have to trust your entire weight onto it and mantle of it to get onto the ledge above. So that pitch is known as the boulder problem. I don't know how many metres, like 40 or 50 metres of shots, absolute shots. And you place in that 40 metres of climbing four bits of gear. And yeah, and it ends with you like crawling and kind of walking through this like huge feature. Uh, and the back wall, you, you, could, you could scoop it, you know? It was literal mud. It's pretty scary. Pitch three was my lead. It is the HVG pitch, which stands for hard, very grassy. This is a 70 meter long sloping grassy ledge, literally covered in little holes where fulmars are waiting there, ready to either jump out at you or spray you with vomit, or just do, you just scare the living crap out of you. That and the fact that there's very little gear on this pitch. To be honest, climbing it is more akin to alpinism than actual rock climbing. You're just grabbing tufts of grass with both hands and just smearing your feet against wet, slippery, grassy ledges. And especially when those ledges are kind of clinging onto the rocks with their roots. Those are the bits that are scariest because you know that if those ledges just give way, you're going for a tumble. And then I link the next two pitches together, which make up sort of one fantastic 80 meter E2 pitch, which is just brilliant. It's like the only good rock on the whole climb. If that, was, if that pitch was in the Lake District, it'd be done every weekend. But it isn't, it's on the most inaccessible cliff in the UK. So Alex kind of like weaved his way up this E2 pitch and uh, got us to the next big pitch, which is the Vile Crack, which is aptly named because it is literally covered in green slime. Now this thing is just a monstrous offward corner that is essentially the drainage line for the long hope. This is where all the water, all the crap, all the bird shit, all the, everything that can possibly get stuck from the top of this face gets eventually stuck.
which is absolute choice. I really hope this guy doesn't fucking spew on me. Oh my god. He's doing that thing with his face. Or her face. Mm. Jesus Christ. Oh, thank God. She likes me. She's a good lassie. Once you've done the, the vial crack, it was then Alex's lead. I was always very aware that this pitch was death on a stick, and I don't think Alex really appreciated that until he led it. Oh shit. Woo! Fucking hell. Good catch on it. That would have been an awful fall. <laughs> Thanks, man. Some beer in, so I'm traversing across a, a break and then I'm looking to uh, sort of mantle over onto a, a small ledge and uh, this huge ledge just comes apart, just, just falls off. Oh, thank God. Jesus Christ. Clinton. Heart and mouth. Instantly, you know, you're terrified because all I've got is this it's rubbish, well, it's a calm and rubbish rock, and then you're falling into like, into the bar crack, basically, it'd be horrible. So tense, Jesus. Whoa. It's scary climbing on rock that you know is shit, but climbing on rock that you think is good that then falls apart. Whoa, puts the willies up here. None of it's hard, actually. It's just dodgy, and it's a lot dodgier than I thought it was. <laughs> kind of like, you can tell the good rock from the bad rock by the, um, by like the colour of it. And what I thought was good coloured rock turned out to be like, biscuits. Just biscuits. Sweet. Do you wanna... Yeah. Yeah, it tends me up like the bad edge. Yeah. It's the first three quarters of the climb done. Time for some food. We were pretty tired. I thought we would stay on the ledge for about an hour and a half to like really rest up, have lunch, digest, have a cup of tea, have a bit of crack. I gave him 20 minutes. I was like, what are you doing, man? We're on the red ledge, we're here to relax. We needed to eat and get going. I had been timing our ascents of, the, of each pitch, and we were moving a lot faster than I'd expected. Yeah, we were making up loads of time, and I really saw it as a good chance that if we moved quickly up the final, up the, up the penultimate pitch, we'd make the crux with enough time for both of us to have a, a good attempt at it. The one thing I was very aware of was the mental toll that these pitches have on you, more so than the physical toll. Because arguably the climbing isn't actually that hard, it's just everything else that's going on around you, like the poor rock quality, the full Mars, and the I guess like a little bit of that stress of just like trying to keep up a good pace while still being safe. And uh, you know, I definitely felt pretty knackered, but I knew that we could still do this. That wasn't fun. Oh jeez. That rope keeps on getting stuck. Ugh. Ah, oh, fucking hate this. 
Don't worry about me. Just throw up a bit. So the vice is a, a very narrow but massive break in the, in the head wall. So massive, in fact, that you can crawl inside it just horrible as it is, is made a lot worse by its, uh, its occupation by lots of full mars. Oh, these bastards eat anything. That's not even it. Got to go up the actual climbing now. Oh my God, look at that. Guillotine is the ledge that you belay off for the crux pitch. And obviously the guillotine, as its name suggests, is pretty deadly. Um, but you've got a mantle on the back anyway. Sometimes it does uh, get to you a little bit. It's funny, I'm not, I'm not that nervous. I'm actually really looking forward to going climbing. I actually can't wait. But just with this size of this thing, it's so big, and there's so many things to think about. Sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. You keep wondering if you remembered everything. At the end of the day, sometimes, you know, you can over prepare for these things. You can do all the preparation in the world. At the end of the day, you've just got to be a little bit lucky when it comes to the actual goal. Sometimes the luck's on your side and you win. Sometimes it's not and you lose. But the only thing we need to be really focused on is giving 100%. And that's all that really matters. Just trying your hardest, seeing if you, can, if you can get off it. And if it's not enough, it's not enough. We'll see how it goes. It's about 7 8 plus, actually. It's just a wee 7 8 plus. You can just try hard. That's all you can do.
try 100%. My God, how the hell did I get up that? Jesus Christ, I cannot believe I pulled that off. <laughs> oh my God, fuck, I'm still gonna get the top though. That's it done! Oh my god. Covered in shit. Covered in vomit. Oh my god. Right. I gotta get down at Alex now. He's been patiently belaying for like hours. Right. See you down there. It's his turn. <sighs> I thought maybe I can't do it. The sun properly going down light fading and I thought oh, I can't do it I'm knackered we've been here for 12 hours I'm exhausted I'm cold I've been on a cold ledge for like an hour and a half now it's just it's felt like there was no way that I could really climb and Robbie says he said of course just give it a go and I thought well we've got to get out of here anyway now and we so, uh, so I might, may as well try and climb out set off feeling awful <laughs> and I was exhausted. I basically didn't have the energy for being excited about where I was. So I just thought, well, give it a go, you know? It doesn't matter.
you believe that? <laughs> Literally the last of the light. I'm so exhausted, like, physically and mentally and emotionally. Oh my God, that is like the end of the most stressful period of my life and it couldn't have gone any better. That was extraordinary. <laughs> Mama said what you wanna be when you grow up Doesn't matter that much as long as you're tough Mama said what you wanna be when you grow up Doesn't matter that much as long as you're tough Cornish climber Alex Moore joining us today. He's climbed the Long Hope. Now, this is a, a very long climb, and it's, it involves the highest vertical climb uh, in the UK. How are you, Alex? Hey, uh, not too bad. Nice to be here. <laughs> well, nice to see you in one piece, at least, anyway. Yeah, glad to be in one piece. <laughs> hey, Mildred, how's it going? So, uh, yeah, this is it. Done the Long Hope Direct. Psyched. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thanks because you've always been there. You've always been there supporting me along the way. You never once doubted me. You never once vomited at me. You never once spat at me or gave any ill will towards me being here. So, I just want to say thanks and uh, I really wish you all the best. You and your little egg in there. I hope uh, it grows up to be a big, strong foamer just like you. And uh, yeah, hopefully catch you another sea cliff sometime soon. Or uh, yeah, make sure to uh, give the next person who comes to do the long hope the same gratitude and same, you know, friendly foamer welcome that you you gave me. Anyway, catch us later. Hope you guys all enjoyed my first feature length film. I've got some more bangers coming very soon including more Orkney action and adventures in St Kilda. Of course, always make sure to subscribe and if you want to support a bit more then please head on over to the Patreon, it really helps me a lot to make even better films.